My name is Peter Knett, and my Super Queero isn't just one person. It's this incredible group of people that came together in the early 1970s to start The Body Politic, which is absolutely the most important publication in the history of LGBTQ rights in Canada. The Body Politic was formed in, I believe, October 1971, when a group of writers in Toronto came together and um, put out 5,000 copies of this newspaper, The Body Politic. They had it sent to street corners and bars all across Canada. And essentially for the 15 years following that, it became this sort of de facto community organizer for this entire country. It was the only reason somebody in Winnipeg, for example, knew what was happening in St. John's. And it was a way for communities to come together and organize to you know, fight many, many battles over the course of the 1970s and 1980s. When the AIDS epidemic showed up in the 1980s, it was a way for people to understand what this disease was because the mainstream media wasn't really telling them. And the body politic would tell them from the perspective of actual gay writers. Really, if, if this publication hasn't, hadn't existed, I don't know how we would have gotten through so many of the things that we got through in the 70s and 80s and 90s. There were so many incredible writers involved in the process of uh, the body politic, and they were not working for pay. They were working because they wanted to use their voice to get out the messages that were necessary at the time. Um, these writers include like Gerald Hannon, Tim McCaskill, Stan Persky, Michael Lynch, Ian Young, Tom Waugh, John Grayson. And these were, you know, incredibly inspiring people for me to, you know, years later, learn about my own history through their words. Uh, homosexuality, I think the the view we take here is that uh, there's no place for the state in the bedrooms of the nation. And I think that, uh, you know, what's done in private between adults uh, doesn't concern the criminal code. Even though in 1969, which was two years before the body politic came into existence, Canada decriminalized homosexuality, that was by far not the end of the battle. Um, in the 1970s, the 1980s, 1990s, there were so many more fights for LGBTQ people to fight in this country. And the body politic, and then after Extra, which came sort of out of it, uh, this was a resource for us to, to understand what was going on and how we could contribute to the, you know, the battle. If you go back to 1971, obviously there was no internet, but beyond that, LGBTQ people weren't even being discussed in any sort of mainstream publication whatsoever. So to have the body politics start and for it to be accessible to people, you could order it in the mail or you could find it at your you know, local underground gay bar. This was an opportunity for people to, to understand um, what it meant to be a member of the, the gay and lesbian community. And it also was an opportunity for them to understand movies that were about them or books that were about them. It, it was, wasn't just about the news, it was about art and social events. Um, it's where you learned where you could go out for a drink where there might be some other gay people. It was kind of everything. If I could thank all of the people involved in producing The Body Politic, all those writers, many of whom are no longer with us, I'd thank them not just for paving the way for myself to, to have fundamental rights and freedoms as a queer person, but also, you know, my own writing has been inspired by what they did. Like, I know that there's no equivalent to The Body Politic in 2019, but I really try in my own work to at least maintain that spirit of bringing Canadians together to understand what their fellow LGBTQ people are doing. So. Thank you, Body Politic. <laughs>